being two spirit is at the center of everything. You know, it's who I am. So it's it's how I am able to speak out against issues and, and raise my voice as loud as I do because I have two very powerful spirits within me. Bujo Giriga Kunst Nindijnikaz. Hello, my name is Jessica Giriga Kunst Smith. I am a two spirit member of the Boys Fort Band of Minnesota Chippewa Tribe. The term two spirit has been a fairly new term. So it wasn't really something that I personally identified when I was younger. I define it as, as having a feminine and a masculine spirit. For me, that's, that's how I identify myself, but I identify as a two-spirited woman. It differs for people. Some people think that all Native people who are LGBTQ are two-spirit. And that is not true. A lot of people think that it's simply a sexual identity and it's not, it's a spiritual identity. My life has improved a thousand times since I decided to go back to school. That was truly when I started my, you know, inner healing of, of being a trafficking victim and survivor. Two spirit people are vulnerable for, for trafficking and things like that because a trafficker or somebody can market them to both males or females. They think, you know, if you're LGBTQ, you, you can do anything, which, you know, it's not, it's not the case. I have a 21-year-old nephew who is two spirit, and I have a 15-year-old niece who is also two spirit. It's truly really beautiful thing to see two-spirit youth really comfortable and embody who they are. Because when I was a youth, you know, it wasn't it wasn't something that I was comfortable with, and historically, it hasn't been something that was a good thing because of colonization. We know that there are still places and families that are not very accepting and where individuals are maybe hesitant to reveal their identity or their sexual orientation. We all operate in multiple worlds in our lives. I'm Jill Dorfler. I'm a professor and the department head of American Indian Studies at the University of Minnesota Duluth. Two-spirit is a relatively new term. It's typically traced to 1990 to a gathering in Winnipeg. An Anishinaabe woman there sort of coined the term Nij Manadug, two-spirit. It's an umbrella term that can encompass many varieties of specific identities underneath of it. Historically, tribes had a lot of diversity when it came to gender identity and sexual orientation. And in the United States, part of the assimilation process was to eradicate those identities, kind of for two purposes. One, for reinforcing European American ideals of gender, sexuality, family formation but as well as for access to resources and to destabilize native governing structures. There were efforts on the U.S. government's part to not allow those fluid identities, those multiple identities to flourish in native communities. People had to either hide their identities or sort of practice them in secret, even within tribal communities. Indian agents in, through the early 20th century on reservations had a huge degree of power. And so if someone was acting in a, in a quote unquote deviant manner, maybe you know, in a same sex relationship, and the Indian agent is controlling the rations that someone is dependent upon, they're not gonna feel free and able to exercise their identity, they're gonna practice that in secret so that they can still get their rations and survive or that they might not experience other forms of retribution um, that the Indian agent might be able to exercise on them or on their family. These efforts then 
worked to the benefit of the U.S. in order to gain property and resources from Native nations. I think the, the fluidity that existed, the many varieties of relationships and identities that Native people had were threatening in the sense that they were seen as divergent from the European ideal system and structure and the way that laws worked. For example, property inheritance. In the U.S., in the early days of the American system, who could inherit property? Men. And so then we need to think about who is a man. These things are embedded and layered into law and governance, maybe without us even realizing it. Even though Two-Spirit is a relatively new term, it comes out of a historical legacy. It's a contemporary way to acknowledge and honor these practices, these identities that have been present in Indigenous communities since time immemorial. Really, um, for many Indigenous communities, there was an acceptance of fluidity. Traditionally, Two-Spirit people were you know, prior to colonization considered sacred because with a feminine and a masculine spirit, you're able to do ceremonial things that both a man or a woman would be able to do. So two-spirit people were, were upheld as sacred in many communities. And that's why when colonization and boarding schools and all of that happened, um, Two-spirit people were hidden to be protected. Now they say that only men are supposed to be fire keepers. It's a product of colonization. I hope to see all federally recognized tribes um, recognize same-sex marriage. Some tribes have modified their laws to allow for same-sex marriage, and other tribes have not. And so there is a diversity in tribal nations today as far as what is officially government sanctioned and accepted and what is not. It's very hard because the process of colonization has caused all of us to some extent or another to internalize these ideas about family norms, gender identity. And so it takes a conscious effort many times to, to decolonize, to work on undoing that work of colonization, and that process is ongoing. Two-spirited is more of a modern umbrella term, and there is a variety of literature available diving more into its origins and meaning. There are many two-spirited peoples of the Native community worth highlighting. From authors to artists to doctors, the list goes on and on.